We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you the following special report from ABC News. This is Lynn Scher at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where our latest space shuttle is poised for liftoff. On this mission, a free-flying astronaut will capture a crippled satellite already in orbit. From ABC News, new challenge in space. Live coverage of today's launch of the Shuttle Challenger. Here now, Lynn Scher. Good morning, and it is another good and beautiful morning. Nothing seems about to stand in Challenger's way into space. The winds are gentle, the clouds are nearly invisible, and even the birds have been scared out of the area by a NASA helicopter to avoid any mid-air encounters. The crew was awake before their official reveille this morning. That's Commander Bob Crippen putting on his helmet, along with pilot Dick Scobie. That's just before they entered the spacecraft earlier this morning. There are some other passengers on board, 3,300 bees, part of an experiment to see how zero gravity affects their ability to build honeycombs. As for the rest of the five-man human crew, all strapped inside right now, here's a look at them from our science editor, Jules Bergman. This is Bob Crippen's third shuttle flight, and the 46-year-old Navy captain is already named to command still another shuttle mission this summer. The rest of his crew are all rookies on their first flights. The pilot, Dick Scobie, 44, is an ex-Air Force test pilot who has flown 45 different types of aircraft. Terry J. Hart, TJ to his fellow pilots, is one of the three mission specialists. A 37-year-old engineer, Hart will operate the Challenger's remote arm. George Nelson, who has been called Pinky since birth, is another mission specialist. The 33-year-old astrophysicist becomes a human spacecraft as he uses the jet-powered backpack to fly over to the crippled SolarMax satellite. Jim Van Hoften, 39, is the third mission specialist. He's an ex-Navy combat pilot, nicknamed Ox because of his size. He'll do most of the repair work on SolarMax once it's within the shuttle's cargo bay. Confident of success on this mission, the crew's slogan, we pick up and deliver, and we fix it too. Thank you, Jules, and I know you are joined there at the Johnson Space Center in Houston by two more astronauts. Dr. Story Nut Musgrave, a NASA astronaut who one year ago took a spacewalk himself, and a fellow who took a walk a couple of years before that, Gene Cernan. Good morning, Gene. A very ambitious mission, this one. Good morning, Lynn. It indeed is an ambitious mission. Uh, the next six days are, uh, are a true test of the space shuttle's commercial viability in space. Uh, Story, how are we going to go about rescuing uh, the Solar Max and putting it back in service? It's a great mission, Gene. It involves the uh, rendezvous with the satellite itself the retrieval of it, bringing it back into the cargo bay, repairing it, checking out, and then a redeployment of a healthy satellite. 35 seconds. Thanks, Dor fully retracted. Story, that, uh, this mission, as you are, are well aware, is a dream mission. Lots of astronauts, plenty jealous of Pinky Nelson for his opportunity to go out there and grab onto that astronaut, uh, onto the satellite. Let's listen in now to the voice of Launch Control. T minus 17, 16, 15, 13, 12, 11, 10. We are goal for main engine start. Eight, seven, six. We have main engine start. Three, two, one. Solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Challenger and the first flight to repair a satellite in space. We have cleared the tower. story over here holding on to the table. I think uh, he recalls that day just about a year ago when he was on top of that, uh, that trail of white smoke. You got me holding the table too, Gene. Look at that baby go. Story, bring back some memories right now. 
Sure does. A lot of vibrations, a lot of noise, and trying to get into space. Story, how much difference does it make that it is going faster because of that direct descent or burning a little bit longer? It, uh, from inside the crew module, uh, it won't make a lot of difference. It's basically looking at the computers and uh, where they're taking you. The big difference for the crew is you don't do that first ohms burn. Velocity 4,000 feet per second. The stack of smoke is still very visible here at uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Absolutely clear sky. Another spectacular shot. At, again, it's almost like science fiction from here, Lynn. That's from one of the NASA long-range uh, tracking cameras, Gene. There go the solid rocket boosters. Isn't that beautiful? That may be the clearest pictures we've ever seen of them. Now they, uh, they will hold on to that tank just a little bit longer to boost them in a, in a higher, uh, uh, or a high point in an orbit, which is higher than what they've done before. So we'll get that uh, main engine. First stage performance, low. All right, let's take another look at the launch, this first launch of a repair mission of the space shuttle, and the first launch start. directly into orbit. We have main engine start. When we can Three. stop watching what it's really Two. doing, we'll go back and see it again. There we go. Here's the launch. And lift Story, tell us what you were feeling at this moment. Um, ignition was a relief for me. I knew we were going into space. Been waiting a long time to get there, and that's what I wanted to do. It was a relief, not a moment of increased anxiety. Okay, gentlemen, Story Jane Jules, our coverage of the Space Shuttle Challenger will continue in just a moment. Challenger didn't let them down. Three, two, one, solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Challenger and the first flight to repair a satellite in space. We have cleared the tower. This time, the shuttle headed directly into orbit. A straight shot that would take it some hundred miles higher than usual to catch up with a broken satellite already circling the globe. And as Challenger raced through the clear Florida sky, a NASA camera caught this remarkable picture of the two spent rocket boosters breaking away. Later, from Challenger's camera, this shot of the three rookie mission specialists, including Dr. Nelson, complete with sunglasses on this solar repair mission. After telling Mission Control at least four times how much they were enjoying themselves, they took some ribbing from their desk-bound colleagues. Roger, Pinky. Uh, we were wondering how it's going up there. Are you guys having a good time? Uh, stand by. I'll take a poll. Besides the fun, of course, they are working. Tomorrow, they launch that scientific satellite. And then Sunday morning, they chase and repair the satellite known as Solar Max. The first time any human has ever tried such a feat. Lynn Scher, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It's been almost three years since the first space shuttle flight, and today the 11th seemed almost routine. But NASA officials later insisted they will never consider it routine to propel a four and a half million pound vehicle to a speed of 17,000 miles an hour within a few minutes. There were no clouds in the Florida skies today, permitting a clear view of the separation of the solid rocket boosters two minutes after liftoff. Challenger, I course in our time. Well, the view from here is as fantastic as ever. Once in orbit, Commander Robert Crippen, wearing the glasses, and other crew members began checking out their equipment, including the shuttle's robot arm. Later, the two men who will go outside the cabin to work on a disabled scientific satellite, James Van Hoffman on the left, and George Nelson braced themselves as Crippen fired some rockets to adjust the shuttle's orbit. Tomorrow, the astronauts will release a platform containing several experiments which will stay in orbit for a year. On Sunday, Nelson, wearing a jet backpack, will try to capture the broken scientific satellite. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Cape Canaveral.